There's nothing inherently wrong about slowly transitioning from one genre to another, provided that the shift is logical and that the creator has the requisite skills to exist in a different genre. David Bowie is arguably the best example of this. He began as a quirky Britpop act, hung out in outer space a bit, flirted briefly with Zeppelin-esque hard rock, and then became world famous as a glam rock star, all within the first five years of his career. What's even more rare than Bowie's ability to switch genres at an alarming rate is the ability to create your own style and also choose what that style is called. Buddy Holly was a major pioneer in the field of rock and roll, but if you'd asked him, he was crafting a genre called Texas Bop. Brian Eno didn't invent the ambient music genre, but he gave it a name when he released 1978's Ambient Music for Airports. Similarly, Resident Evil wasn't the first survival horror game, but the term was coined as a part of the game's marketing campaign. But unlike Resident Evil, Brian Eno never tried to please everyone. He merely produced a few albums for a band that would go on to do exactly that, and David Bowie always had the good sense to limit himself to one genre per album, a sensibility Resident Evil 6 lacks. I'm finding this to be a remarkably difficult game to review. This is only the third game I've covered, and it's proven to be quite the learning experience for me. As a reviewer, you have to play the game practically non-stop until you've finished, whereas a normal person with a job or a family or an education in progress might only get to play the game for an hour or so every couple of days. And that is really the ideal way to experience Resident Evil 6, as my marathon sessions of the game led to me absolutely loathing it. The game is like a pharmaceutical. If you exceed the recommended dose, you could experience some adverse side effects. A big problem lies in the game's story, which is poorly paced and repeats itself quite often. The game has four scenarios that feature seven playable characters, and these four scenarios intersect from time to time. And while this is meant to add depth to the story by exploring the same events from different perspectives, it merely amounts to the player having to go through an identical sequence several times. But the fundamental flaw of the game is its ambition to be an action game. As I said earlier, I don't necessarily object to the creators wanting to evolve the series, but action games need a good camera and good controls, which this game lacks. The combat role, a staple of the third-person action genre, is present in this game, but it's unintuitive and awkward, and often results in you entering the game's floor shooting mechanics, which are also unintuitive and awkward, and the health recovery system, which has never been a problem, has been tweaked and tuned to the point that it's almost broken. You can still recover all of your health with first aid spray, but now herbs must be converted into health tablets, which are used with the button press. But a health tablet only recovers a fraction of your health, so if you're near death, you have to press a button, watch an animation, press a button, watch an animation, and so on. Also, the game keeps survival horrors limited ammunition and inventory, which does not blend well with the game's never-ending series of drawn-out firefights and encounters the seemingly unkillable bosses. There are some powerful melee attacks available, but they're limited by your action gauge and prove to be quite ineffective against enemies packing sniper rifles and rocket launchers. Speaking of enemies with guns, the game's ambitions to be a horror game are severely hampered by the fact that there are enemies toting automatic weapons. Try as they might, you simply can't make a gunfight scary. And the fact that you run out of ammunition on a regular basis doesn't add tension, it merely adds frustration. And speaking of enemies, Resident Evil 6 tries to introduce new enemy types at a confounding rate. Variety isn't a problem, but the bestiary of this game reminds me of Action 52, an old game cartridge that boasted 52 games in one. Sure, there's lots to choose from, but just about every choice is dull and uninspired, if not laughably bad. Fans who are put off by the incompetence of Sheva Alomar's AI can breathe a sigh of relief. The AI at first seems improved, but as you play the game, you come to realize that this is merely an illusion. Instead of fixing the partner AI, they've simply removed all the ways in which the AI can fail you. Your partner is invincible, never runs out out of ammo, and at worst will sometimes keep you waiting for a moment as you stand by one of the game's plethora of cooperative door openings. You'll split up every once in a while to open a path up for your partner, but the majority of the time, that's all you need them for. To open a fucking door. Cooperative gameplay is every bit as unnecessary as it was in the last game, and works against the horror elements of the game. And should you be unfortunate enough to have to play the secondary character of a scenario, you might realize just how much you aren't needed as you stand idly by while you watch your partner execute a series of quick time events. But sometimes it is nice to have a living, breathing friend watching your back as you traverse from set piece to set piece. However, due to the incredibly tight camera, they'll need to watch your back and your sides, as monsters encroaching from the periphery are invisible until it's far too late. Overall, Resident Evil 6 is an underwhelming game. 
Leon's scenario is somewhat enjoyable and stays true to the roots of the series by borrowing elements from Resident Evil's 2 and 4 outright. Chris Redfield's scenario plays like a bad Gears of War clone, and the unlockable Ada Wong scenario takes a page out of Metal Gear's book with stealth action. Series newcomer Jake Mueller's scenario plays as a blend of the other three, and like the others, it's hampered by awkward controls, a bad camera, poor pacing, and a rampant abundance of quick time events. The voice acting is well done, but does little to elevate the lackluster story, and quality voice talent almost makes me pine for the Jill sandwiches of old. Resident Evil 6 tries to please everyone, and in the process, leaves a lot of people unimpressed. My recommendation is that you rent the game, play the Leon scenario exclusively, and leave it at that. Everything else in the game is crushed beneath the weight of bad design choices made by an overly ambitious development team. 